Okay, so we've heard a number of examples from uh, from within financial services uh, about different uh, in institutions as well as uh, 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 fintechs about how they can engage better with customers, about how they can uh, find new new ways of, of doing business. What uh, what we we're going to hear now is uh, I'm going to invite um, uh, Pavan Keshavamurti from uh, Open DevEx to uh, to help us understand what else is what is going on outside the financial services uh, industry and what specifically what financial services can learn from the the marketplaces and ecosystem models that that are found in in other other industries. Uh, welcome, Pavan. Thank you, John. Uh, I hope you're able to hear me fine. I can. Uh, there was a bit of background noise, but I think that's that's minimized now. Um, uh, I'll, I'll wait a moment to see your screen come up. Uh, can you maximize that a little bit? Because I'm seeing some black bars down the side. Um, Is it possible? That's better. Uh, it was it? better. It was better, but now it's back to the, the black bars again. Can you make it a little bit bigger again? Is this any better? Uh, I didn't see a change. Uh, I'm presenting the, presenting the whole tab. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, it's in presentation mode, though. It okay. is. All right. Well, I, I will uh, leave you to it. OK. Thank you, John. Um, Folks, thank you for attending. Uh, my name is Pawan. I'm very privileged to be talking here at API Days uh, on this topic today of what financial services can learn from platforms and ecosystems elsewhere. So this talk is going to be a part business with some uh, specificity, or at least perspective on banking and financial services. Uh, but towards the tail end, we'll also have uh, some technology gotchas. So with that, we'll begin. Uh, firstly, um, about myself. I'm uh, here in the uh, beautiful city of Bangalore. Um, unfortunately, at this point, we're not doing uh, very well on the COVID front. Uh, the picture here is from February last year uh, when I thought I was being uh, overly cautious masking up. Anyway, um, I didn't know uh, a year down the line, uh, you know, we would be where we are. Uh, but a brief introduction, I've worked on, uh, worked on, worked in, in the API platform space for a decent part of the last decade. In my uh, previous avatar, I was a practice leader at a consultancy that's uh, helped with API platform adoption, developer ecosystem creation, amongst other things at uh, tier one telcos, BFSI, retail, uh, even some healthcare, both in North America and here in APJ. Uh, at present, I'm working on OpenDevX, uh, which is a, an open source product focused on developer experience. Uh, we also have an adjacent concern, which is Platformatory. Uh, we're a consultancy focused on API platform strategy and cloud native consulting. So um, getting uh, into the uh, meat of this talk, um, I want to take you through this uh, latest and greatest leaderboard of companies by market cap. Uh, you probably expected to see uh, a FANG list in here, and that is indeed what you're seeing. Uh, but what stands out here uh, and very contextual to this talk is that um, seven out of 10, 70% of this list have built that valuation uh, at least partly uh, owing to their digital ecosystems as a point of leverage. So really, um, the order of the day is to think and act like a digital native. And I think uh, you know, that's, a, that's a principle that will apply here in the financial services scene in Asia as well. And I think uh, to that extent, uh, there is, uh, there is a plenty of uh, lucrative market available, if you will. Uh, this is a McKinsey projection of uh, global gross revenue from ecosystems uh, by the year 2025, which is only four years away from now, uh, to the extent it is almost a 30% part of the economy itself at that point. So increasingly, um, the ecosystem is tantamount to creating value exchange via leveraging each other's business capabilities. Uh, and to that extent, it seems like APIs as a medium and channel is going to dominate the future of B2B commerce to a very large extent. 
Um, many of you might have um, seen uh, this list uh, aggregated by uh, you know the Grace's Ford uh, around the third party API economy. Um, each company in this list probably has a billion dollar valuation on an average. Um, what you will notice is that all of them cater to developers as first class citizens. Uh, their product offering is to a large extent centered around APIs. Um, take just Stripe, for instance, which is now valued at 100 billion. Uh, the most defining quality there is really the love from developers and loyalty. Um, cursory glance at the fintech unicorns globally, uh, special noteworthy mention that um, most of the Asian unicorns happen to be in India and China, uh, incidentally, the largest markets out here. Uh, but one would probably find uh, the ASEAN and the Singapore fintech scene in general uh, to be emerging to some scale over the next few years. Uh, many of you might be familiar with these names, uh, and nearly all of them have evolved or are potentially evolving developer ecosystems. So um, what does that really mean uh, in uh, Steve Ballmer's uh, inimitable style? I don't know if you've seen uh, the developers, developers, developers video. This is one of my favorite videos on the internet. And it's also just a reminder that Microsoft uh, paid quite a fortune to complete the acquisition of GitHub, uh, which I think is uh, you know, an interesting foray in really you know, what developer ecosystems bring to the table. At the heart of any developer ecosystem is really the law of comparative advantage at play. It isn't humanly possible to address the whole spectrum of use cases in a given problem domain, particularly within the uh, you know high expectation thresholds surrounding customer experience these days. Instead, it makes a lot of sense to offer interfaces to ecosystem partners who can address parts of the value chain and potentially in that process, unlock new possibilities and dimensions previously not thought of. Um, you know, I mean, I, I quote somebody as really developers are the very heartbeat of digital innovation. And uh, it makes an unreasonable amount of sense to be investing in ecosystems. Take, for example, um, some of this Bain research that I wanted to bring up to you uh, in terms of the emerging possibilities in the insure tech ecosystem. Um, it's quite a transformation to look at all of these use cases across you know, safe driving, emergency support, um, health and wellness, uh, treatment, financial planning, uh, all of this from what used to be mostly a high volume, low margin, uh, underwriting centric business to addressing truly what are ecosystem possibilities. Another case in uh, study is also that of Ali Group. I think it's a really good example of a case study in ecosystem success. Um, by one metric, non-core commerce revenue, uh, predominantly from uh, the lifestyle services, amongst other things that the Ali conglomerate has invested in, now accounts for as much as 50% of its total revenue. So a lot of that growth is uh, actually driven by cross-business data sharing, a model that I think will be very attractive to conglomerates in other industries. So um, you know the, the whole notion of cross-business data sharing is, I think, inherently very powerful where you can build upon existing businesses and use that as a leverage to spawn new digital businesses. And that brings us to a point right, uh, on um, what is your ecosystem posture and uh, some directional advice got just to that effect. Um, I think it's important to understand the platform um, economics, uh, in a nutshell, uh, provider organizations within your enterprise uh, build offerings uh, and those specifically manifest as API and data products. 
um, a platform provides coverage of various cross-cutting concerns and uh, enables very carefully mediated access to consumers, uh, which is, in other words, the developer community. Um, growth is attained by empirically attaining a market fit and amplifying network effects uh, based on the value signals that are available. Um, it's also important from an ecosystem perspective to consider what is the role that you will play. Uh, obviously, in nascent markets, there is indeed a, a demand for building ecosystems itself. Um, and in uh, other places, it might be much more around participation or orchestration. If we have to sum this up, um, you know, the three uh, major constituent roles uh, in any ecosystem really revolve around platform ownership, which is really building and sponsoring the platform and offering governance. Uh, orchestrators build very synergistic partnerships and uh, having tuning knobs to control both supply and demand. And participants are the real value creators in the ecosystem, uh, either by consuming APIs or provisioning APIs themselves. So what role you play is uh, directly a function of your competitive posture. And uh, you know, I found um, I found this uh, wonderful slide. Uh, it's some research by Cognizant. Uh, for example, this is the fintech uh, scene of the day, uh, which is little, little, a little bit of a tri-junction between uh, big tech incumbent banks and fintechs, each to their own uh, competitive advantage. Um, harmonious ecosystems enable themselves to be groomed for convergence of mutual interests. And uh, as you can see, you know, between non-banks, traditional banks, and fintechs, uh, there happen to be uh, quite a lot of areas of collaboration, uh, which many of these uh, companies already seem to play. But uh, at, a, at a high level, um, you know, the success, particularly of um, this class of fintechs, you know, PayPal's, MasterCard's, Visa, I think is to a large extent uh, built on top of their value proposition, which is in convergence with what banks have to offer, amongst other things. So in, in other words, it's a win-win-win proposition where you probably turn uh, erstwhile competition into collaboration. Um, you know, zeroing this down to the BFSI ecosystem in specific, again, uh, this is a neat reference model uh, by McKenzie uh, around an ecosystem operating slash participation model. Uh, particularly of interest here is the platform model and the uh, data monetization model. Uh, these map directly to top line revenue impact in the larger scheme of things, and in uh, our opinion, have the most amount of significance. So um, we, we come to a point of uh, putting up some prescriptive advice, um, particularly for incumbents and digitally maturing banks. Um, we've seen talks here, uh, even by the previous speaker around open banking. So uh, operating low friction and uh, an interoperable open API program, open standard centric program is, uh, is one of the uh, low hanging fruits. Uh, but over and beyond that, uh, there is also much scope for evolving very differentiated platform offerings. Uh, and um, banks predominantly sitting on a treasure trove of data, I think uh, there is a substantial opportunity in transactional insight and uh, advanced analytics. Um, as for emerging fintechs, and SaaS, uh, providing APIs and services that basically enable experience integration across a variety of use cases, followed by you know, classic customer data platform. Customer 360 opportunities can be very, very lucrative. Both segments have a substantial benefit in cost reductions uh, via externalizing what may be the adjacent or peripheral areas that they may not be addressing. Um, you know, it, that might have implications in overarching concerns such as uh, regulatory operations, amongst other things. So um, 
uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, challenges and cautions. Uh, you know, in practice, we've seen that uh, you know starting an ecosystem journey can be quite difficult. Um, you know, most of all, it begins with um, you know embracing a culture of co-creation and uh, operating a platform rather than a classic build by binary. Secondly, many of you probably have experience or have been using off-the-shelf API platforms. Um, our own feeling is that uh, the developer ecosystems um, sometimes dubbed as uh, you know, an ecosystem management as a service problem domain is a fairly hairy problem domain in itself. And that is worth externalizing. Uh, API management is uh, increasingly a commodity. And in the cloud native world view of things, uh, risky in a single vendor situation. And uh, API gateways and management platforms should be architecturally fungible, at least in principle. Uh, thirdly, uh, the API supply chain is a painful problem. Uh, in terms of actually, you know, organizing a well-oiled API product portfolio, central team approaches invariably don't scale. Uh, depending on the organization, it can be too broad a realm to address. The supply chain is actually best handled by self-organizing API product teams, and it is basically you'll need to create uh, tooling and processes in order to make this work. Fourthly, uh, in our experience, we've also seen many ecosystems uh, attempt and fail at direct monetization. Uh, this is fundamentally because of the um, underlying business model being too complex. Um, often API monetization products, uh, most of the time API management platforms and public API marketplaces tend to shoehorn the underlying monetization model to be based on um, number of API calls, for example. Um, APIs are a channel for monetizing the underlying service. So, you know, services should be measurable in self-evident business metrics and ideally in direct correlation with uh, the end user customer experience that is being delivered by your developers. Uh, fifthly and lastly, your API products also need to be uh, distributed. Uh, and whether that's through your own developer portal, or a public API marketplace or another channel, uh, solving for developer experience is, you know, is just about as important as solving for customer experience. And uh, that brings us to the to another very prescriptive part of this talk. Um, what will help you build a successful developer ecosystem? Um, firstly, it's it's crucial to gain visibility of your APIs and services. Um, you know, which might be siloed across teams, projects, business units that they operate in. Uh, it's quite important to automate this discovery and organization process, uh, probably with you know, human curation and discretion. Um, at, at one level, that's an enterprise architecture topic of organizing your services and building a holistic services catalog. Um, secondly, uh, productization is a rigorous journey. Uh, it involves a lot of design, product thinking, uh, business model canvas, objectives and key results, your developer experience strategy, various operational parts around marketing, for example. Uh, the end outcome is you know, really a consolidated uh, API product catalog. Uh, thirdly, uh, monetization, uh, probably the most important detail, um, evolving a clear definition of metrics unique to your service, for example, you know, a data, a data API may be metered based on the query complexity of the request or on the number of rows of data returned. Uh, a machine learning model API might, on the other hand, meter based on a catalog price of the insight or the prediction being served by the model. Uh, subscription billing is a very close and allied concern. Uh, what you are not able to meter, uh, rather what you are able to meter, you should be able to build. So today we live in a world where subscription and enterprise billing systems such as um, you know, Stripe or Zora are innovating for first class usage based billing models. So um, you know, this domain should uh, and can handle um, you know, the, whole, the whole nine yards of commerce concerns, payments, ordering, taxation, revenue share payouts, and much more. Um, fourthly, uh, governance. Uh, is a key requirement. Um, you know, uh, what 
any platform ecosystem must be able to do is to answer questions like uh, what products are working and what aren't. Um, obviously, you start with a hypothesis, make some bets, you know, collect engagement metrics, app usage, but uh, there needs to be scope to making empirical decisions based on what's working and what's not working. Uh, there are also other revenue metrics at play, uh, such as you know, average revenue per developer or average revenue per customer. Uh, I think these uh, tend to be the signals of how your ecosystem is performing simply from a monetization standpoint. Um, a well-oiled uh, API product portfolio might look uh, something like this. Uh, you, know, you will obviously have um, tierage by uh, the API class. Uh, you know, most APIs uh, are probably transactional APIs, uh, typically RESTful APIs, uh, you know, defined by Open API, Swagger, or other interface modeling tools. Uh, but there are also heterogeneous API standards emerging in terms of events, web hooks, web sockets, uh, and a whole class of very event-centric APIs. Uh, and those are becoming increasingly uh, important in the uh, business of delivering you know, engagement, uh, context, uh, and typically in real time. Uh, you also have GraphQL, fantastic way to address data services. Uh, the highest value will probably be still around uh, insight APIs that can offer predictions based on proprietary data and machine learning models, for example, that one might have. Uh, finally, you know, APIs can and also must be tiered by audience, domain, and uh, uh, the monetization model, whether it's a free API or a premium API. Um, uh, we're coming to a close. Uh, this is a reference architecture that we see emerging uh, with customers. Uh, the notion of an ecosystem or an API back office to cover the supply side concerns. Uh, an API network as a distribution channel, which might manifest as classic developer portals or public API marketplaces and exchanges, um, is another key part. Uh, there are cross-cutting concerns such as uh, the entire API source discovery process from across API lifecycle management systems, runtimes, gateways, and uh, finally the usage-based billing and um, API commerce bolt-ons, as we discussed earlier. Uh, the ecosystem platform is ultimately a derivative of, um, you know, um, how do you put it, a shared kernel of product requirements. So, you know, a platform is not a platform in itself, but really a platform is around uh, around the product concerns that it addresses. So uh, with that, we draw to a closure. Um, uh, the ecosystem journey is incremental along two axes. Um, the ecosystem size itself that's being addressed, as well as the underlying services and products. Um, an aspirational goal is to move incrementally uh, in the spirit of crawl, walk, run. Uh, you know, you'll need to move from APIs being traditional integration points or uh, quote unquote internal APIs uh, towards an expansion to key B2B partners, ISVs, long tail developers, and uh, finally, you know, aspirationally at least, uh, building an open API innovation hub. Uh, and it may be very ambitious, uh, but very attainable and uh, lucrative for the emerging fintech of the day. Um, thank you. With that, we draw to a closure. Um, we'll end the talk here. Uh, open to Q&A. You can also reach me on the email address mentioned here. Uh, thoughts, comments, and feedback. Welcome. Thanks very much, uh, Pavan. I have a couple of questions because I think what you've done is you've drawn out uh, examples of, of marketplaces and ecosystems in, in uh, other other industries. But then you, you talked, uh, which has a strategic element to ha how you partner, who you should partner with. But then there are lots of aspects about that are organisational and technical that mirror the sort of um, challenges that firms are facing when, um, when they try to um, become more agile and um, develop, break down the, the monolithic architectures into more microservices is when you, uh, when you structure yourself that way, then 
you, you mentioned uh, the, the the API tackling the API supply chain. Um, you it doesn't scale if it's if it's too too centralized. Uh, that you really need to um, to scale through self organizing teams. So. What, what are the sort of skill sets that teams, the self-organizing teams are then going to need in order to, um, to be able to handle that? Because most, uh, there, are, um, there are full stack developers. They're, they're, a little, they're a little rare because a lot of developers focus on front end, back end, or, or some other part of the stack. And then even if you have full stack developers, they, they don't necessarily, um, have a great flair for marketing their API uh, or in engaging with uh, with other players uh, internally or externally. He may he may be able to leverage the, the the API. So, what what advice would you give as as organisations try to um, advance along that maturity curve um, about uh, how you how you communicate that uh, to your teams? The the ability. The ability not just to be, to be agile, but also to be outward looking rather than just uh, inward looking. Great question, John. Um, uh, what I've tended to see is that um, uh, you know on the tech side of things, um, you know, uh, investing into um, building a an industrialized API design practice within your organization and evolving standards. Uh, which is really uh, an enterprise architecture topic is one thing that probably takes precedence, uh, which is really about empowering product teams and specifically the architect personas uh, in those teams. Uh, more so in terms of the outside in outlook that teams will need to develop. Uh, I think it's very important to uh, get API product managers uh, accustomed uh, to uh, keeping um, you know, an outside-in outlook, really, uh, to say the least, uh, in terms of thinking uh, about their API product uh, in the sense of um, a consumer developer. Uh, and I think that's very, very important. Um, I, um, I think in practice, it might be uh, reduced, to say, uh, to a few set patterns uh, which can scale, uh, particularly creating a process around uh, talking about the product value proposition, uh, talking about product use cases, uh, developing a playbook for, uh, let's say, product documentation at large, uh, or interactive consoles. So I think it, it the, the answer really lies in empowering product teams, uh, particularly architects and product managers, to put on an outside-in uh, th you know, thinking hat and uh, being able to leverage uh, tooling that is available uh, in order to do this as a scalable process. Thanks, uh, thanks very much for that, that insight. Well, thanks, Pavan. And um, is this... Uh, this